Hello, Dan Foster here with Tolaris, and I've got a special guest here, the CEO of Level AI, Ashish Nagar, and welcome. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you here. Why don't you Thanks give for us me. real quick, you know, what's Level AI, and for those who don't know, uh, you guys are doing some really interesting work. Thanks for having us, Dan. So Level AI is a Silicon Valley-based startup. We are focused on customer service uh, space, and more specifically, we are building a customer intelligence and automation platform. So we sit on top of customer service data to improve the quality of customer service agents, to find insights into this customer service data to help different functions within the business, product, sales, compliance, and then finally, in real time, help the agents perform their job better. This leads to more automation, yeah. better business insights, and higher ROI for the business in a variety of phases. Sure, yeah. but I don't really think of you as a startup because I've seen some of the size of the deals that our partners <laughs> are closing with you guys, and right. I think that kind of catapults you out of that startup phase, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. We have we have Fortune 10 customers, Global 100 customers, and we it's both a testament to our partnership, but also to the sort of appetite in this space for technologies like ours that we are rapidly growing. Right. And you're doing a lot with AI in the contact center for those who don't know that space. Right. I mean, talk to us about uh, the, just real quickly, like AI in the contact center, because I want to drill into that just for a minute uh, right. and get to, you know, generative AI, chat GPT, but just what's, what's going on with the AI in the contact center? Absolutely. So this is an incredible opportunity, Dan, for the partner community, for innovators like us, for end customers. 2023 in this, this this time is where there's an incredible shift in the underlying technologies uh, which power these AI models, and we talk about that as well in a second. So there's an opportunity for our better automation, and there's an opportunity for better intelligence, customer intelligence systems using AI. So. So this leads to both better customer experience outputs, higher revenue and lower costs right. for, for the contact center. These problems have been known for 20 years. There has been AI in the contact center for the last 20 years, if not more so. But we are living in a golden phase where technology, every once in a while, it's like 2007 for iPhone, right? Yeah. Every once in a while, the underlying technology changes and there's a rapid change in customers' understanding and their their sort of expectations and the availability of solutions. So we're going through a very sort of interesting yeah, transformation. Yeah, very interesting times, right? Yeah. So I think our partners really love to hear kind of just a real tight use case. Like what do you have like, you know, whether it's a bank or something, just give us like, you know, 30 seconds on what happened there. Because I, I think it's amazing, like right. knowing your technology. Absolutely. Uh, it's an amazing use case. Absolutely. So there are two or three uh, three use cases I'll talk about. First, customer intelligence or conversation analytics. So we are able to review 100% of email, chat, phone calls, which are coming through. And for example, for a bank, monitor them for compliance in real time monitor them for loan collection rates in real time and pinpoint which teams are collecting better, which teams are not collecting better. Or monitor them for sales efficiencies, which teams are, are doing a better job of portraying their products. The second use case is around quality automation. Typically these large contact centers have dozens of people reviewing manually 2% right. of conversations. That can now be done for 100% of conversations at scale using AI. And finally, once you have this data, we can make real-time interventions in these contacts, in these agents' workflows to help them sell better, yeah. create better experiences for the customers. Gotcha. Yep. Now, uh, generative AI, that's mm -hmm. all the talk these days. You hear, uh, and I think we were talking earlier, you know, you, you, your, your grandmother's asking you all the way <laughs> to uh, board-level conversations or asking Absolutely. CEOs. You know, the CEO challenge being revenue generation, productivity, and brand and customer experience, right. AI has a real impact. But what about that next level generative AI? Right. So th that is a foundational change in our space, which I mentioned before. Earlier, so I, before I started the company, I was a product leader in Amazon's Alexa team. That was four or five years ago. We would have one tool for each AI use case. For, for example, we would have one tool for uh, 
topic detection, we would have one tool for intent detection. Now, what's, what powers generative AI at the bottom or chat GPT at the bottom is what are called large language models. Though that is the brain which powers these experiences. A large language model is a Swiss army knife, but it is a more powerful Swiss army knife than any individual tools you could have, right? So now the fund under underlying brain has changed, which are these large language models. Right. So companies like us, which have rebuilt their entire software stack with large language models at the center, are the ones which are flexible, which can you know create 10 to 100x better performance. And that is really the change which you will see in the space around generative AI and the contract customer service over the next five years. Now, everyone talks about ChatGPT. That's the best known version of it, right? ChatGPT is a product experience built on large language models. It's not the AI itself, right? Yeah. So that's why, and one thing I would tell all our sort of audience, when looking at technology partners, there are two things which are very critical. One is data security and privacy. Right, I was gonna ask you about that because right. I really worry about large right. language models feeding in and then that's my data. I exactly. don't need it in the public domain. Exactly, so when you when you push, so you can't, so data security and privacy is really critical. So inputting it into a system such that it is secure, private, and all the AI is done in a secure environment. And second is being able to customize the output for yourself. So if so you are- tuning. Right, the tuning part of it, right? And if our technology is based just on ChatGPT or OpenAI and so on, you can't tune it, you can't sort of modify it, right? So having control over your data, being able and then being able to tune it and modify the output of it for your use case, we call it observability and configurability in okay. the AI stack. And those two things are critical. Company when suppliers vendors need to have that in their stack, and you do that when you have own this sort of whole engine on your own. As right. Sort of okay. So, and for the partners out there, they, you know, we're getting a little technical, but it's really not then a large language model, right? It's right. actually the foundational elements of the data, right. but it's really your private language model in that case. Exactly. Is that right? Or That's exactly like, right. Okay. It's a private language model in that case. So we have the ability, for example, theoretically, to build one for Walmart, one for Bank of yeah. America, one for Wells Fargo, and each of them is secure. Each of them is private, and then. Now, Bank of America, again, theoretically, would want their data analysts and contact center leaders would want to fine tune it, tinker it, sure. and make it their own, right? Make it and more effective and more efficient for the reps, for example. Exactly. So then you need a SaaS workflow says that I can tinker the large language model on my own, yeah. right? Right. And so that that is what you are looking for a modern AI stack. Got it. And that's the world we are into. And that would be the next 10 years of this transformation, in my view, on AI's, that's how AI software would look like. Yeah. Not just powered by simple APIs, yep. Then, but this whole vertically integrated software stack. Right, right. Well, that, So you heard it here today, that it's a great conversation with Ashish, and uh, we're excited to have you out here, and uh, thanks, thanks for, for coming us. in.